just want to ask a few questions following on from the discussion earlier about hate crime. Sure. And uh, Deputy Commissioner, you mentioned different categories. You had uh, uh, race-based uh, race -based hate crime, religious, uh, anti-Semitic, Islamophobic, homophobic, transphobic, and uh, disability, and, and perhaps some other categories. If you have religious uh, hate crime and then also anti-Semitic and Islamophobic, are they counted twice, or is, what's the difference between the, those categories? They can be, because a lot of this is obviously uh, uh, self-defined, so you can have more than one flag, absolutely. Right. So, uh, without too much detail, because of time constraints, hmm. you basically put a crime, a crime report or an incident report on, it has a number of drawdown flags based hmm. on the conversation you've had with the person reporting, or the information you've got, and you would highlight those flags. So you can have a number of flags. In, in, in exactly the same way you can have people who are, are, are vulnerable for a variety, of other region, uh, a variety of other reasons as well. So there could be one crime or one report of a crime which could might be counted. Of flags, yes. It could be counted twice or yeah. three times or perhaps more. Yeah, if they, the, it, certainly around incidents, yes. Right, OK, yeah. fine. Um, with, you often mention that there's a, a spike, you know, some, after some of the, the terrorist incidents. Um, how do you compile the figures? Because we often hear afterwards there's been a daily spike or a, a spike on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. Uh, what sources do you use? Do, are they all reported directly to yeah. the police or do you oh, use some outside no. agencies as well? So, so some will be third party reporting, mm. but the, when we talk about uh, uh, crimes, as we're talking about, in, in these, they're ones that have actually been reported to us. We monitor uh, so that, as you can imagine, when something happens, there's a number of systems that are put into place, mm. including at a strategic level, daily monitoring. Others in the organisation are monitoring these and monitoring the data uh, at a local borough level, sometimes almost lifetime. But we're doing it at a strategic level mm. on a daily basis. Do so, you still so? Do you still use Tell Mama as a source? So we use we use. Tell Mama, we use a number of other groups uh, uh, who bring third party reporting into mm. us. But to get to a crime, we've got to have instances of a crime being reported. Well, if it's reassuring, your... Chester, so not all incidents would be a crime. No. Is what, mm. yeah. But when you put out a press release, for example, after a terrorist incident saying that there's a spike you know, in hate crime, as has happened you know, after the. Um, the London Bridge attacks. Uh, there were the, do you are those figures relating to reported hate crime or actual crimes that are, uh, reports that are then designated as crimes? They're, they are reports of crime. So when the, we talk about it, we're putting out crime data. Hmm. So they're, they're reports of crimes. And yeah. will, will all of those go on to be you know, actual crimes, or will they're, some of them be designated as, as not being crimes? Well, oh, gosh, it would be difficult to without doing a detailed analysis of whether, because there's, there's various categories, you can then what I call mm. no crime, and very few would end up there. That's why you have to be very careful in this space around whether you talk about crimes or incidents, because um, incidents might not be crimes, and, mm. and crimes might not be reported as an incident. Yeah, I mean, just going back to Tell Mama, are you aware that their funding was stopped, you know, some years ago? I, I, I'm not responsible, and I don't look into okay. funding for third party agencies. Mm. The reality is, if people want to tell us about incidents, mm. to some extent we judge on what they tell us rather than the organisation telling us. Do you think you need to be very careful with third parties that you're using just, just to make sure that what they're saying is, are credible? Well, but I think that's we, we do that test before we, we, we call things as a crime. I mm. think we have to be very careful, personally, mm. as an organisation, saying you can only tell us through that person, that person. It Are you is, happy with Tell Mama? I, it's, I'm not going to make judgments or statements about particular organisations. I'm going to say we mm. use third party reporting to inform the picture we have of what's mm. going on in London. Mr Mayor, are I you happy say, with you know, Tell Mama? In answer to a question asked by uh, Tom Copley, I, mean, I made the point that actually we should be supporting third parties from making complaints. Often a vulnerable victim, there could be a variety of reasons, doesn't want to report an incident to the uh, mm. police, but it could be passengers on a bus, it could be third party groups, it could be... Uh, a member of Parliament who report crimes to mm. the police. The police then, as the experts, work through the incident to decide what response there should be. But I'd encourage anybody who sees criminality, whether it's criminal damage, mm. whether it's a serious criminal offences against the person, uh, including hate crime, to please report it to uh, the mm. people, in positions of power, people in positions of power and influence. If you don't feel confidence to report it to the police, report it to somebody else and they'll report it to the police.
With hate crime, I mean, you, you want people to have confidence in, in the figures that you put out. You know, there have been some incidents of people reporting very, very trivial things. For example, Amber Rudd, you know, I'm not a conservative, but she was reported uh, for a hate crime for something that she said in her speech on immigration. Uh, the Essex Police and Crime Commissioner said after Brexit in the uh, supposed uh, spike of hate crime there that some people were just reporting, you know, they didn't like something that Nigel Farage said and reported it as a hate crime. Heaven forbid. How, how do you... Sorry? Heaven forbid. Well, well, okay, that's your opinion. But my question, to, to get back to being serious and, and scrutinising you, is um, how do you uh, distinguish between those reports which are, which are obviously trivial and uh, those which are real hate crimes. You know, so because we do really need to make sure that anti-Semitic hate crime, for example, which is rising, is dealt with, and, and that's not classed in the same category as things which are utterly trivial. Uh, if you put out these figures very, very quickly, you know, without distinguishing between what's trivial and what's serious, how can people have confidence in your narrative? But so, so on ours, there is... There's a well-recognised threshold of when something's a crime and a description of what is a crime. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said to you about the issue about being clear about whether we're talking about hate crime incidents mm. uh, or hate crimes themselves. Mm. So lots of things can get classified as a hate incident. People make allegations to us about all sorts of things uh, to get hate crime every mm. single day. It doesn't necessarily meet the threshold to be a crime and to be investigated. And we've always been very clear on those sorts of things. So, so when you talk about, you know, our, when you, you come out very quickly and you mention hate crime, they're actually reports. Do you not think that you should actually say that they are reported hate incidents rather than saying, first of all, they're hate crimes? Because some of them might not actually go on uh, to be prosecuted. <coughs> and, and that would then, you know, allow people to have the confidence that you're not including things which are trivial in, in your, your statistics we that come out very, very quickly after, you know, a, a, an alleged spike. Well, they, but, but in fairness, we, we often get accused if they don't come out quickly mm. because of that incident around uh, exactly what you said, that mm. uh, issue of being sure they're absolutely crimes. So we'll often talk about in the last week, mm. this is what we had in terms of crime. So we can often only do that. There's usually about a two or three day delay from something we reported as an incident to ending up as a crime on the system. Mm. Uh, in terms of doing it, it might have been crimed uh, if it doesn't get into the central figures and that reporting back to us. So we're clear when we're talking, we're talking about hate crime. And are all the um, incidents that, that, that are reported on the same day, are they all, uh, when, when you give your daily figures, are they for incidents reported on that day or are they for incidents that actually were carried out on that day? No, they, Is there a possibility that you know, people report something but it was actually done you know, a few days before? As there is with every crime. So we, 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 I mean, we haven't touched on it. We're getting crimes reported now that occurred 15, 20 years ago. So when, and, they end, so, and it's really important, and they end up in the crime figures today. Okay, so when there's a, you know, you say there's a spike after a terrorist incident, are some of those, uh, you know, alleged incidents maybe happen on days before they're, they're reported? Uh, without doing a detailed analysis, we can do all of that. Yeah. We can break them down by times when they're reported. We can break them down by who reports them where they come through third parties. But the reality is, most of those things even, as I, as I say, what I would call, let's take hate crime out of this, all the other mm. categories of crime, mm. you go away on holiday, come back and your house has been broken into, is that a burglary today mm. or is it a burglary when you went on holiday? Well, I'm, that's, I'm, but that's normal. Mm, that I'm not happens. sure that you've... you've, you've no, no, that, no, in fact, fairness, that's perfectly normal. That happens with right. every type of crime reported. Okay, it's, it's just that, you know, if you, if you come out and you say there's a spike in hate crime like one or two days after a terrorist incident, some of those incidents that are reported might have happened before the actual terrorist incident took place. Mm. I mean, so I'm, I'm not sure that you answered the, the question there. But uh, well, one I, I, thing... In fairness, if I may, I think I did answer the question. You okay. might not have liked the answer. Was that's possibly, that, that's that is possibly true. That's a different <laughs> test. Yeah, um, that is I did answer the question. Yeah. Finally, where, where are your figures published so that everyone can see them transparently. So uh, the mayor touched on earlier in terms of the uh, the works that's going on around the uh, Mopac dashboard. Mm. They'll have hate crime on the dashboard uh, in terms of the work around that. So you'll be able to see. Can, the, can we see them now, or uh, is that something? I for don't the know if it's live today. It's soft launch. It's, it's ready for its yeah. soft launch, but that will allow you down to a borough level to yeah. look at particular hate crimes. Yeah. In terms of